We give you all of your glory. We give you all of your praise. Adoration in Jesus' name. Somebody bless the Lord. We thank you, Father. We honor you, Lord. We're happy to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in our midst. Amen. Let's open the Bible to Isaiah chapter 6. Somebody bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 6. Praise God. Ready, go. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Praise God. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twin he covered his face, and with twin he covered his feet, and with twin he did fly. Praise God. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Hallelujah. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Then verse 8, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? Then I said, then said I, here am I, send me. Somebody bless the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name that is above every name. In the Jesus, the shepherd of our souls. Jesus, the chief cornerstone, our high priest. Father, we humble ourselves. We come before your presence. We thank you that you've brought this moment for us to bless us, to use us to bless others in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, let the teachings that you've predestined begin to come forth. Let the people hear your word. Father, grant us a hearing ear and a receptive heart. And above all, grant us the grace to hold fast to what we hear. Father, you said in your word that he that had an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Father, give us that ear that is receptive to the word of the living God. And Father, by grace, we confess that we will bear fruit a hundredfold, that the kingdom of God shall increase. In Jesus' name, somebody say, Amen. Established. Amen. Somebody say this with me. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I reject every negative statement, every negative word that is being used to hinder my ability to hear the voice of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I reject every negative statement, every negative word that others have spoken into my life that is holding me back from rising up to the level that God has predestined over my life in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, 
I confess and I repent from every negative word that I have spoken against anyone else, against any church, against even my maker, the most high God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I hear the Lord say tonight, uh, you're here to lose the chains that you placed on yourself through negative speaking. How to lose the chains that you placed on yourself through negative speaking. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is, is ministering to us. He's telling us that it took an encounter with God to reveal to Isaiah that his mouth has stopped him from being able to hear from God. Somebody bless God. Hosanna. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 2. Father, we give you praise. It says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Praise God. It is not the positive words of your mouth that snares you. It is the negative words from the mouth. It is not believing what God has said that snares us. It is saying what we want to say when we feel bad that snares us. It's yielding to the devil and allowing him to speak through us. That brings the snare. But look at Lamentations chapter 3, verse 37. Somebody bless the Lord. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We honor you. We worship you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. It reads, who is he that saith? And it cometh to pass. When the Lord commanded it not. Praise God. Look at the next verse. Father we give you praise. Out of the mouth of the most high. Proceeded not evil. And good. Amen. You see this is relevant. Because the Lord wants us to understand that. When we say that God is with us. It is true. That by 1 Corinthians 3.16, God lives inside of us. It's true. But the Bible also says that we have to have Matthew 7 verse what? 15. We shall have the fruit that proves that God is inside of us. It says, for ye shall know them by their fruit. Praise God. So we can say that God is with us. God is in us. That's true. But the Lord is saying now. He said, excuse me, I have a question for you. Yes, Papa. Are you doing, you want to do this? I said, okay, Papa. He said he wants to do it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They will not see in the ghost. They say, I need to dance. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So we have to slow you down because you're going too fast. Yes, Papa. Okay. Okay, all right, let, let's lay some foundation. Okay, okay, I hear you. Okay, Father. Go that way. Okay, let's go to Psalms 45, verse 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Let's read together. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, God hath blessed thee forever. The Lord said, hold that. What brought blessing into manifestation? Someone say, what brought blessing into manifestation? Grace that pours out of the lips. 
out of the lips. Halabasha. The Lord is saying the root cause of negative speaking. Let's go to James 3 verse 6. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. It says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire, the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. It is not possible to say a negative word without the devil being involved. It is not possible to say a negative word without the devil being involved. And it's not possible to say a negative word to someone repetitively without the person doing it with bitterness. The Lord said, grace, gracious words. One of the definitions, I didn't ask, okay, he didn't want me to define that. Okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay, the Lord is saying, I, I, I want you to, I want to uh, explain to you why that although what you're trying to say is okay, but it's not what I want because go to John 6, 63 so I can explain it to you. Oh, Father, I thank you. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He reads, it is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profited nothing. Hmm. The Lord said, tell his people to underline nothing. It is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise God. Do you see that? The Lord said, the, the church, many people in ministry don't understand that the word of God is life. That Jesus died for this word to come out. Many preachers don't understand that the devil is afraid of the word of God. Because of the price that was paid for the word to be delivered. If a Christian can listen to the word of God and use the word of God, they will defeat the devil every time. But if a Christian speaks their own words and their own feelings, the devil will defeat them all the time. Hosanna. So the Lord said, now, when you come to preach, I want you to speak my word. Because in every word I give you to speak, that's power. Hey, hallelujah. That is why I want you to say what I tell you to say. Hey, that is why in John chapter 17, Jesus, in giving account of his ministry to the Lord, said, I only said to them what you told me to say. I never said what you didn't say to say. Because anything I'm trying to tell you from the pulpit that is from me is powerless. My goodness. It is only the word that is powerful. The apostle Paul said to the Corinthian church, kete, 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 kete. So I don't want you to bring that in. Okay, Father, praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Praise God. So that's why we step in to bring that correction. Because we're leading you. Amen. We give God his praise. Somebody, would you give God his glory? God, we give you glory. 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 
God will give you glory. God will give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So you couldn't, I couldn't, we couldn't say a negative word without the devil being involved. Hey, you couldn't also say a good word without God being involved. Look at James chapter 1, verse 17. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Every good gift, <laughs> I see, and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Praise God. Now, somebody bless the Lord. Let's go to Psalms 33 from verse 3. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. The next verse. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. Praise God. The word of God is right. That means every other word is false. <laughs> and the word of God is truth. Kata. That means every other word is a fact. Because I see it, that doesn't make it true. Do you know that everything we see is not based on what we, how it is. Everything we see is based on how we are. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the, those who are corrupt, everything is corrupt. Do you see that? So the Lord is telling us Isaiah had to encounter God to realize that his mouth has been the main source of problem in his life. Supposing there's someone listening right now, thank you, Holy Ghost, and you love the Lord, and you tithe, you fast, you do everything, not legalism, but you're under grace, but in fellowship with the Lord, and you're saying, Lord, but I know there should be more. You know it. You can feel it inside of you. You say, Lord, there's more. There should be more. There should be more. And the Lord says, I, I want you to have an Isaiah experience. I want to open your eyes to see that the devil is not the one holding you. What is holding you is the way you talk. And that's why Isaiah saw that his, the way he talks was a problem. He said, my mouth is causing a problem and I live with people who have bad mouth. Goodness. And he says, I'm undone because I saw God and you're not supposed to see God. But you can't see God because he's inside of you. <laughs> because when Thomas asked to see Jesus to show him God, Jesus said, the word it's what God wants you to see and believe. That's why he gave you the word. Not supernatural encounters of God. Which has its place. Which has its place. It has its place. But the Lord says the best and the most effective way to relate with God is through his word. Because Apostle Peter says we have a more sure word of prophecy. Somebody bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. See, you couldn't 
speak a negative word without the devil being involved. The Lord said, I'm telling you this because before you speak, you receive a thought that moves to your feeling. And most of your actions is from how you feel. And the Lord said, if you can capture it, use Second Corinthians 10 from verse 4. Let's go there, please. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, 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 so far, it is saying that these things will, in the spirit realm are not male logic. They're not mere logic. They're not mere logic. These things are supernatural, and they require supernatural strategies, divine strategies. For There's kingdom strategies for demonic structures and demonic activities and territories. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but the Lord is saying by grace, you will invade that territory that had been off limits for your life. And you shall possess your possession in the name of Jesus Christ. For I'm hearing the Lord say, the same God who empowered David to, to inquire of the Lord, shall I pursue and recover? And the Lord said, you shall pursue and you shall recover all in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God. But you see the strategy in 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 4 now, verse 5. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's stay here for a moment. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you glory. God, 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 we give you glory. Father, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us say, watch the process. Casting down imaginations, thoughts, word pictures that manipulate feelings. So, so the Lord is saying, when the thoughts begin and they're contrary to the word of God, and when the feelings like someone saying that they're tired, it's not that someone cannot be physically tired, but they're tired that is emotionally tired, which is an instigation from the devil that is trying to get to somebody's mouth. Oh, somebody say, watch your mouth now. In the name of Jesus. Exodus 4.12, you don't need to go there. Say, the Lord be with that mouth. I'll be with that mouth. I'll be with that mouth. God, be with my mouth. So, so when those feelings are working, it's a process. Nobody just comes up and curses. Okay? It's a process. Someone says it's a process. So, so the enemy begins by negative imaginations or negative thoughts. Oh, look at how this is. Look at how this is. Look, uh, nobody loves you. Nobody is asking about you. Nobody cares about you. When, when you begin to receive that, then all of a sudden it moves to how you feel. And then before you know it, you speak it. Why? Because look at Matthew 12, verse 34. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hosanna, you may. Hosanna, okay. Can we say this together? Father, it's not by my might. It's not by my power. But by the Holy Ghost. According to Psalms 107, verse 20, I send your word to loose myself from any bondage that my mouth, negative speaking from my mouth, placed in my life. Father, I repent of that 
in the name of Jesus. And I bring your word of Revelation 12 verse 11 that you said that I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. So in Jesus' name. So every power that be that I utilize in negative words that I spoke about myself on me, the Lord of hosts, disperse them, this, 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 dismantle them, disband them, disband them, disband them in Jesus' name, disband. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will explain that to you. Okay. <laughs> awesome God. It is not what God did for us on the cross that we believe and speak we shall have based on how we live. Because you have to flow with the principles to get the promises. However, the finished works of Christ that we refuse to accept and that we turn around and confess negative things about ourselves is the area that gives the enemy legal loopholes. Okay? So, so this is why it's serious to understand that the enemy moves through manipulations of feelings and negative thoughts so we can verbalize them. Somebody bless the Lord. If you notice in Genesis that God created the world by speaking. Although he formed the body of a man and released his spirit into that dust and made it a living soul, but God first spoke man into existence. Because when in Genesis 1.26, he says, but let us make man. After our image and likeness. So, so the Lord doesn't play with words. And in the spirit, words are relevant. Praise God. But the Lord is telling us, since Galatians 3.13 says, we are in Christ and we are redeemed from every curse. From all the Old Testament curse. Somebody bless the Lord. Since we are redeemed, no curse can come on us. However, the curses that we speak has to be dealt with. So we are not talking about the curses before we were born again. Because when we are born again, we come under the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the baptism of the blood of Jesus that washes us and brings us into the body of Christ. So we are members of his body. We are children of God. But the Lord is saying that if you and I keep saying negative stuff, then we begin to try to destroy the things he has built in our lives. But he doesn't want us to do that anymore. And he doesn't want the devil using that against us or against our families. Somebody in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So watch the process. So when that negative feeling begins to come, what did God tell you and I to do? Second Corinthians 10 verse 5. Cast it down. I don't know. The Lord said cast it down. Don't take it one moment. Don't take it. Don't take it. Someone said don't take that thing. Actually, there's a scripture that says don't take it. In Matthew 6.31. In Matthew 6.31, you will see it. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, what are you thinking about yourself? Don't think negative about yourself. Don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself ugly. Don't call yourself poor. Don't call yourself sick. Don't, don't, don't. But the person is saying, but I feel this way. Your feeling is not you. 
The Bible never says that God talks to us through feelings. God talks to us through his word and through our reborn spirit. In Romans 8, we're going to read this in a minute. Yes, Holy Ghost. In Romans 8, 16, it says that the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Praise God. Watch this. In Matthew 6, 31. <laughs> It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, do you see that? What shall we eat? The Lord said, don't go there. Don't take it. Someone said, don't take that thought. What shall we drink? Someone said, don't take that thought. Don't take it. Or where without shall we be clothed? Don't take that thought. Why? Because you're about to speak it. And the moment you speak it, you activate it. How do we know? The angel Gabriel said, said to Daniel, I am come for that word. I am come for that word. Oh, the blood of Jesus. So how many problems are in the lives of believers that feel that they have a legal right to be there? Imagine if you were to tell a problem. If you're to talk to a problem, kata, konsa, kantaya. The Lord said, don't use, don't go that route, go at the different route. Okay, tell me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Ede be here now, silly hill of proceeding, and I'm going to bring Marty, and I'm a little bit of hay, civil, cool, and steady, Savarashi, Rukumanase, Ketea, Ketea, Ketea. The Lord is saying that it grieves him that the body of Christ. Don't understand that they are bigger than problems. Problems exist because of legal grounds. Problems exist primarily because of sin. And the Lord is saying, when you understand righteousness in Christ... And obedience to God. Problems will shake when they come around you. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the Lord. Because we have authority in the Lord Jesus over every problem. We have authority in the Lord Jesus over every negative situation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the Lord is saying, watch your feelings. Someone say, watch your feelings. Don't talk based on how you feel. There's another scripture on this. Look at Proverbs 4.23. Father, we give you praise. Mm. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Praise God. Do you know that although your mouth talks, but your heart also talks? And the Lord said, is saying to us, fill your heart with the word of God. <laughs> Colossians 3.16, look at that. Somebody bless his holy name. Oh, Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in us Richly. Amen. Be rich in the word. Hallelujah. Ooh, I sense fire on my feet when I said that. Be rich in the word. Amen. Be rich in the word. Be rich in the word. Praise God. Praise God. 
itele de bukolo la bashite ke la moko sabere de mestere de besti ina mako sabere de hela barako bere de mahansa barako no masta you see the lord is saying there are certain manifestations we can't get in life until we stop talking negative Um, you know what I'm hearing? Negative talking is a blessing killer. Look at Psalms 50, verse 23. And there's a scripture that is coming to me. Psalms 50, verse 23. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. It reads, Whoso offer it praise, glorified God. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will God shew the salvation of God. You see, how we talk can affect what we have. This is important because we don't need to admire people who talk negatively. And many times the devil will say, well, this person talked negatively. Nothing bad happened to him. You're making this a big deal. Just tell him how you feel. <laughs> but remember, also you can't say how you feel if how you feel is not saved. If what it means is if how you feel it's not based on a saved person from a mindset of someone that is saved. If you're feeling negative, jealousy, or hatred towards someone, you can say that. You need to pray. Because that's not how a saved person talks. But watch this. Look at Psalms 140, verse 11. It says, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. If someone is speaking negative, the Lord is saying they can't be established. So when Isaiah saw this, then he says, Lord, cleanse my mouth. Hallelujah. Are there some things in my life and in your life that you feel like saying, oh God, cleanse my mouth in the name of Jesus. Help me regarding the way I speak about this situation. Help me regarding the way I speak. I tend to speak what I see and how I feel. Lord, intervene in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God that we are not alone, that the Holy Spirit of God is there to help us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Oh, Zebalama Hotabi Sheke to Sebina Nasilisa. So so what do we need to know in order to help us to stop saying negative things? The Bible says in Hosea 4 6, for my people are what? perishing due to lack of knowledge. So, so, so my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou should be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Amen. We don't want to forget the principles of the kingdom, the law of the Lord. Amen. The word of God. Someone say, I don't want to forget the word of God. Praise God. So, so the Lord is telling you and I, okay, how do we work this thing? How does it work? How does it work? What do I need to do to help me not to speak negatively anymore? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Can we pray for a moment in the Holy Ghost as the Holy Spirit gives us all thrones? Abashi, Abashi. So you don't need to pray, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, Papa, okay, Papa. 
Ok, papá. Que le buna gina goste vire hira buku vrene masta rike na kastava. See, I'm already here. Thank you, Father. We worship you forever. Amen. Ozana. There are six things that make people speak negatively. First, go to James chapter 1. From verse 19. Mm. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Listen, number one is not listening. You know, many people with, fam with family problems have this in common. They don't listen. The question becomes, it's just the number two. Why don't they listen? Why don't we listen? Look at the next verse. We can use that verse too. James 1 from verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. They don't listen because of bitterness. So when we, people have bitterness in their heart, they get angry quicker and faster. The Bible says the angry man stirs up strife. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You could say, but, but, but how did that make you so angry? Something so small. It's not even that that made them angry. It's the past unforgiveness. Grudges, things that have stored up in their heart. So how does that affect them from listening? See, they already have this idea that you have done something wrong or you're going to do something wrong. So when you're talking, they can't. They can't, the enemy won't allow them to, oh, Zana, you see that? You see that? Those, the enemy will not allow them to listen to you because they're shaking, they're, they're fighting because they, there's a legal ground. See that? There's a legal ground. The legal ground is that they have unforgiveness. And, and sometimes when they even hear another person's voice, that anger rises up and they can't even listen. And if they don't repent of that, when they do listen, they will hear the wrong thing. Because the enemy has confusion going on in their lives. They will say, you may not believe it, but it's biblical. I believe it, Papa. Please help me to believe. Help me to believe. He said the third thing is this. The third reason why people say bad things is unthankfulness. My goodness. Go to Romans chapter 1. Hosanna. The Lord is saying, an un, a, a, a thankful man has gracious mouth. A thankful woman has gracious mouth. My goodness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We are number three now. Amen. James 1, 21. Yes, please. Romans, please. Romans. Yes, please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It says, because that when they knew God, 
they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. So, is he able, sir? Is he finish it? Okay. And their foolish heart was darkened. You see, the moment we don't thank God for where we are, oh my goodness, Jesus, and for what we have, then, we, then the enemy moves into the emotions, into negative thoughts to bring manipulations, to bring confusion. The Lord said, you know that someone must be confused to be speaking evil against themselves. While God says in Psalms 139 verse 14, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. You know that someone must be confused to be disagreeing with God and agreeing with the devil that hate them. Hey, I just heard something. Did you hear it? Amen. By faith, the woman of faith. Amen. That's right. That's the way to do it. Amen. Do you know the fourth thing that the Lord just said? This people speak negatively because of pride. Look at, yeah, we can use it. Look at Proverbs 15 verse 1. Thank you, Lord. It's a, a soft answer. Turn it away, wrath. Be grievous words, stir up anger. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna. There was a man in the Bible that almost got killed, but later on, God did kill him, though. God, God killed him. What we meant by God killed him is God allowed things to happen to him. Okay? So God does not kill people. Amen. Praise God. God is a good God. It's an awesome God. Mighty God. Amen. All right. So God removed his protection. I'm talking about the man by the name Nabal. Nabal was a boastful man. And his name meant a fool. And then his mouth actually got him killed. Because of the things he was doing, that David was going to go wipe him out. The Lord sent, moved through his wife, one of his wives, Abigail, to bring deliverance in his life. But later on, the Lord allowed him to be removed. Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. So pride is one of the reasons. The Bible says that a proud man answered it with boasting. They just answer anyhow. They have no regard, no respect. But, it says, but, 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 but the Bible says in Psalms 18 verse 35, King David said of the Lord, Lord, thy gentleness has made me great. Thy gentleness. Praise God. Amen. You see, when we're prideful, it will end up in negative speech. Here's another thing that leads to negative speaking. Hmm, goodness, did you hear this one? Number five, Hosanna, Hosanna. He said, doesn't want me to use that. Okay, praise God. Hosanna. Listen, you may not believe it, but it's there. Fear. Fear. There's a reason why God said to us in Psalms 23 verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. In 2 Timothy 1 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So fear is not from sound mind. Fear is a spirit that is contrary to the spirit of faith in God. Amen. 
But when people are afraid, the enemy begins to say that this will happen, that will happen, they turn negative. The Lord said, but do you know why they're afraid? The, you know, where there's fear, the Bible says that perfect love casted out fear. So there's no perfection, the, the love is not perfected. Then the Bible also says that sin causes fear. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. But you see, people become afraid when they drop the word of God. <laughs> In Romans 10, 17, it says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we keep hearing news or things that are full of fear, guess what? That's what we're going to keep hearing, keep hearing. And that's what we're going to try to manifest. That's what the Lord is telling us. Be careful what you hear. Be slow to what? Speak. Fast to hear. But don't hear stuff that is not biblical. Don't hear stuff that is not from the word of God. Because it, it's not profitable. It's not profitable. Praise God. Amen. So someone that is afraid believes that they're going to be homeless. Someone that is afraid believes they're going to be stranded. Okay. So, so with those things in motion, what is happening is that actually for the devil to operate, the devil must have fear. But for God's power to flow and manifest, there must be, there must be what? Faith. Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. Okay, Holy Ghost, I give you God his praise. Amen. Okay, what is the number sixth reason why people say negative words? Praise God. It's not that they're saying negative words because they're insulted, because that falls under pride. Because when you're humble, nobody can insult you. My goodness, I want to hear that some more. <laughs> so, when we're humble, nobody can insult us. Jesus. So if I'm crying around, saying they're insulting me, the Lord is saying, you're feeling it a lot because you're not humble. Look at First Peter 2, 23. Somebody bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 2, 23, yes. It reads, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Praise God. So the idea of defending ourselves you see <laughs> the idea of defending ourselves is not only prideful, but it shows that we don't trust the Lord. But why don't we trust the Lord? Because many times we say, God, you're too slow. That's what we think. But God says that he's fast. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is quick. Amen. Somebody bless the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is saying, you see, you see, I'm trying to get you now. Okay. To stop while you are in the world but you're not of the world. There's the human side of you, but there's also the reborn spirit side of you. And we want your spirit man to start ruling over your senses. Praise God. We want you operating through the scriptures. 
Like Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. Here's the next thing that will help us not to speak negatively. is the fear of God. The fear of God. When we have the fear of God, the Bible says that the fear of God is to depart from all evil. The fear of God is to depart from all evil. Praise God. It's the fear of God. How's that relevant? We're here right now. God is teaching us all these things. When we, this is classroom. When we leave from here, we're going to the real world. And God expects us to put this into operation. To demonstrate that we're his children. So that through our lives, other people can say, you know what? You don't get angry like you used to anymore. What has happened? Somebody bless the Lord. Oh, may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Not people in your work, because everybody has a good behavior at work. But people in your home will come and say, I have observed you for weeks. You're not angry like you used to, and you don't fight like you used to. Something has changed. Can I come to church with you? Somebody bless the Lord. Oh, may that, may that be our testimony. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hosanna. Now, remember, it is not that they don't deserve for you to tell them off. They do. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. But it's that is not who you are. So you can't do it. You can't do it. Someone say, don't look at what they deserve. Focus on what God told you to do. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because if you tell them off and they tell you off, what's the, where's the difference? And then you lose credibility because they're like, you're just like me. But, but Jesus says, this is how you know that they're from me. The love that I have for one another, but also for those around them. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to do it. Amen. Thank you, Father.